Oh, wait, hold on. And Carlos, I'm going to need this. Yeah, so I'd like to uh, introduce Alex Wolf. He's the Dean of Engineering. And he, before he came to UC Santa Cruz, he was the president of the ACM. And uh, uh, I think, you know, it's a great honor to have Alex uh, uh, here and give a few words. Uh, closing remarks, as we call it, for the first day, but there are two more days. And, um, and we also, you know, after Alex uh, said a few words, we also are going to give a preview for the next two days. And so, Alex. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Carlos. Um, and uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad to hear that I am not the thing that's standing between you and the <laughs> request. One more thing, good scheduling. <laughs> uh, so let's see, I, uh, you know, I am not just the Dean of Engineering, but I'm also uh, a longtime computer science person um, and uh, actually started my work in software engineering and I'm part of the Bell Labs diaspora from the 1980s. So uh, open source is a concept uh, that has been part of my life, my professional life, you know, for decades. And uh, I admit that I was um, definitely a skeptic, an open source skeptic at the beginning. I didn't, what I particularly didn't like about it was that I felt it, it valued software at zero, right? And I thought that that was sending exactly the wrong mes message at a time when companies and the government was truly getting its head around, getting their heads around the idea that software is what was actually driving a lot of the innovation, a lot of the flexibility, and a lot of the cost in systems development. And to then sort of telegraph that it was value zero, to me thought we were undermining our case for more, frankly, support from industry and from government uh, to understand software and understand the properties of software, how to develop software, and how to improve the whole, whole process. But then I realized over time that the value of software is zero is actually, it's actually true. The value is software engineers, I realized. It's in the people. And so um, the investment, as I saw companies starting to hire people to work on open source projects, I realized, no, they actually are valuing the software, but they're valuing it in the right place, which is the people, the engineers. And so I became a, a, a convert. Um, and it's incredible to see what's, what's happened and how it's influenced, influenced so many things. I mean, obviously we, we heard about open hardware, uh, um, you know, open science, all of these sort of buzz phrases you hear now, uh, you know, they have their origin in the word open, which I think is, is indicative of the influence that we've had on large swaths of the uh, technical and scientific community. And that's, that's, really, that's really impressive. Um, to me, one of the, uh, the great contributions of UC Santa Cruz was actually an open source project, which was uh, the um, open sourcing of the human genome in 2000. Right, which is not something that one thinks of as, you know, software, of course. But uh, although, what could be more soft than the human genome? Um, uh, but that was a really important moment, and of course, it came, um, you know, at the chagrin of a large company in uh, south of here in San Diego, because, you know, the secret had been given away. The secret had been given away, but, but it enabled this incredible innovation uh, in, in healthcare and our understanding of life. Uh, so, you know, if you think back, that's in 2000 here, this is a place that has been embracing open source in many dimensions for a long time. And, and I think uh, it's one of the things that I'm really, really proud of in, in Baskin Engineering and UC Santa Cruz. 
Um, so, uh, you know, to have um, Carlos and, and Stephanie lead this, this opportunity here to open an, an OSPO and once again, kind of reinvigorate the whole conversation around open source in the university as our other disciplines, our sibling disciplines in the arts or in the social sciences and the humanities, the sciences are, are kind of discovering this concept and understanding the dimensions in which we can actually share and innovate collaboratively. So, uh, you know, this, the, the OSPO was born in Cross, which was a very, very successful uh, local enterprise within engineering. And now moving that to the level of the campus and the intellectual breadth of the campus, I think is a very, very important step for, um, for the work and for the, for the, excuse me, for the university. So um, thanks to the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, um, and thanks to the experience born of, of Cross. So, um, uh, you know, Cross, I think, is, is an important place to sort of look for, for ideas. Um, we've had some really great successes. I'll just, I have a few listed here uh, that I want to share. So we've had uh, two incubator fellowships, and the idea here is to help people to take their work and mature it to a point where it can live on um, beyond their PhD dissertations, beyond their investment in it, and bring that work to uh, a, a broader audience and in, a, in an interesting set of domains. So uh, Oscar Alec, uh, he produced an open source platform for learning and visualizing connectivity patterns in complex data sets using algorithms that are inspired by the foraging behavior of slime molds. Okay, mm. So you put these things together and you get a really, really interesting idea. Um, and it was a collaboration with uh, astrophysics on the campus and linguistics, interestingly. Who would have thought? Uh, Emily Lovell, um, her work was strengthening underserved segments of the open source pipeline, underserved segments of the open source pipeline, which is kind of an interesting uh, thing to look at, um, leveraging past outreach efforts at the college and high school level. We in UC Santa Cruz have a, a very strong commitment to inclusivity uh, and to reaching people who are not traditionally involved in engineering but who have, of course, wonderful ideas uh, and wonderful, wonderful new thoughts to contribute to engineering. Um, so she worked to produce a programmable e-textile button with a controller for LEDs. And uh, a third thing that I think Cross has been really, really instrumental in, in promoting is outreaching to uh, students. Um, this past summer, we had another, well, we had an instance of the open source research experience. And um, this was a, a, an opportunity to bring students in for an in-depth experience in the open source ecosystem. So we had 13 summer students. Interestingly, there were 17 mentors. That's not the usual ratio in these sorts of, of things, right? So we actually had more mentors than students, which speaks, I think, very strongly to the interest that the community has in developing more and more talent from a broader um, set of students and from a broader community. And, and of course, now we have this symposium and I wanna thank uh, the supporters of this symposium, um, Sloan Foundation, Linux Foundation, uh, the Inclusive Excellence Hub at UC Santa Cruz, which is helping bridge the, the traditional chasm between academic innovation and industrial, um, industrial innovation uh, and cross itself. Uh, IBM Research, thank you. Intel, thank you. Um, and uh, I think that's all I wanna say.
<laughs> but I want to, I, I, I just want to um, wish you all a great, you know, you've had a great first day. Wish you all a great two more days, uh, fueled by uh, the Bavarian specialty. <laughs> um, my, my personal history is, is from Austria. My parents were born in Vienna. So had we done this, we probably would have had uh, wine from the Grinzing and uh, a different, different kind of a different kind of affair, but uh, I sure will still enjoy. I will still enjoy <laughs> those uh, those beers from from Bavaria. Okay, so thank you very much for your time.